Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com. This is part 15 of our Coda UI video series. So in this part, we are going to start hand coding the web application in Coda UI testing. So before starting this part, I would request you to watch part 11 and part 14 since this part is going to fully depend on those two parts. So hand coding is exactly similar technique which we discussed in part 11 of this video series. So I would request you to watch part 11 before starting this since that part will give you a complete understanding of what we're going to perform in this particular part. So let's not waste our time. Let's jump into Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we worked in part 14. So we discussed how to record the code using Coda Device Test Builder and how it does the operation for us using record and playback. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this thing and what I'm going to do is instead of using the recorded method, I'm going to write one more custom method in this custom caller.cs itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more custom method. So let's call this as public static void custom web method. Oops. All right. So here what I'm going to do is as you go to the uimap.designer.cs file you can see that the username is actually coming from a window and it has a document and within the document you have this username edit box so this is the relationship right so why don't we just go to this guy and see what it actually talks about so if i again go to this definition if you can see here, this Internet Explorer window is actually inheriting from this browser window class. So this is very interesting. This is not a window, let's say HTML window. No, this is not an HTML window. It's a browser window. So you're inheriting everything from a browser window. So you should keep this very important point in mind because everything in a web application is coming from a browser window it is not coming from a html window or something no it doesn't work that way right so browser window is the parent class for our any page right so browser window so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the instance for browser window let's call this as this browse window is equals new browser window so it, this guy doesn't have any parent controls so what are the search properties? It has a property called name and it is exit automation. So why don't I just copy this guy? All right. So I'm going to say browse window dot paste it right here. All right. So this is my browse window. So I'm going to first create the browser window. And then as we discussed, we need to get this document. So what is this document? Let's go to definition and let's see what this guy deals with. So this guy is an HTML document. Okay, that's fine. Pretty pleasing name. So as expected, this guy is a HTML document. And let me call this as a doc. C quotes new HTML document. And his parent is obviously our browser window. So I'm going to just pass this instance variable here. All right. So what is this search properties? So it has a title and it has an absolute path and it has redirect directing page. Frame documents false false. Okay, we cannot pass all these search properties because just note that null, even if you pass, there is no point in passing this guy. So false and false is there pretty fine, but still it is not meaningful for us. But the title is kind of meaningful and the absolute path is kind of meaningful to us. So I'm just going to use this filter property right now and I'm going to pass this guy. Right? So this is kind of meaningful to me. So I'm just going to use this filter property and we'll talk about other filter properties properties like why we are not using them in upcoming videos of this video series but as of now just keep this in mind this i'm going to just only one property of this html document and i'm going to use this and see if this control is freely 
recognized or not right all right let's say control minus so this will take me back to the color where is that okay so what is this ui username edit so surely it is an html edit so it has a name username right see this is a HTML edit property so I'm gonna create a HTML edit and let's call this a txt username is equals new edit of uh, document is its parent so txt search username dot search properties of HTML edit dot property names dot name is equal to so what is the name is username all right so I'm just gonna paste this guy and then we need to type the value right so I'm gonna use keyboard dot send keys of txt username comma what is the value mm, let's say Karthik all right so this will type this value Karthik into this text box and let's try clicking the button so it is nothing but HTML button so HTML button btn login is equal to new HTML button of his parent is nothing but the document all right so btn login dot search properties of oops html button dot property names dot name is equal to i'm pretty much not sure what is the name for this button so let me do a control minus oops no rather let's go back here so login button let's go to the definition okay the name is login so I'm gonna just paste this guy right here all right so we need to do a mouse dot click so I'm gonna just do a mouse dot click of btn login great so why don't we just run this guy so I'm gonna just call this method instead of the recorded web method I'm gonna use the custom web method all right so okay to launch a Windows application we tried this application under test dot launch of this one right so how to launch the Internet Explorer and navigate to that particular page so can we do that obviously yes we can do that using browser window dot launch so there is a method called browser window dot launch of the URL you can also pass the URL here see there is a new URI you can pass that or you can also pass the string name itself so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass this string so I'm just going to copy this guy and I'm going to paste it right here that's it and this guy is going to open the browser for us and it's going to navigate us to this particular URL right so let me save this once again and let me go to the test explorer I'm going to close the existing instance and if I run this selected test right now it should open me the browser and it should type the username and hit the login button for me if we wrote the code correctly so let's see okay it's typing the cart there oops I think we're gonna get an error all right pretty perfect error so what does it says it says the Microsoft Office Studio dot UX control not found exception great so seems like we did some mistake there so let me navigate right here so what is this problem so HTML button the login is not been identified okay 
let me go to the recorded code once again and see what's actually it is oh okay the problem is it is HTML input button but not HTML button that's the problem so because there are two types of buttons one is HTML button and one more is HTML input button so you should use the right class for the right per operation which you can perform so this is going to be HTML input button now if I run this test this should work fine so now if I run the selected test it should open me the browser and it should type the name all right did you see that it performed the data entry of name card in the username and it also clicked the login button there that's it great guys so it's performing the intended operation for us the next question is how to type the other controls as well so for that I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type the initial in that particular field so what I'm saying is the initial say this one so I'm going to type KK for this guy so we know what this in the name of this particular initial okay great so let me go to this guy so let me just type HTML edit txt initial is equal to new HTML edit of doc and txt initial dot search properties of HTML edit dot property names dot name is equal to initial all right and then we do a keyboard dot send key oops and we're going to pass the txt initial and the initial is kk all right great so now if i run this test you will expect this test to run right so let me run this test and see how things work all right it types the name and hit the login button but now if you could see it's trying to find the initials text box but it will surely fail as you can see here it says that the initial control the edit control of name initial could not be found and it says failed to find any control that matched the value of initial for the search property name right so what's really going wrong there what's really happening so to understand this a little deeper so if you go to this UI map dot UI test you can see that the recorded web method has got this initial and you can see that this guy is actually coming from this particular document but this is different one the UI execute automation document one is different from the UI exit automation document so there are actually two documents so this document deals with these controls and this document deals with these controls so there are two documents altogether so if you go back to our CS file we have actually used only one document which has been identified with this particular browsers and this particular document but let's use this Coda UI test builder and understand what is the difference between these two documents so for that I'm going to open this application and then I'm going to do a navigation and see whether we are missing something so this is the text box and it has this particular document so if you click this show all properties this will show you all the properties for this particular documents and you can see it is the control type of document and it has a inner text okay and it has a title execute automation and it has an absolute path etc okay that's great so what if I log in and what if I see this particular document here see you can see there is a document 2 that's fine and it has same control type document and it has different inner text altogether and it has same title exit automation again but it has a different absolute path as well so the common the commonality between these two document is the title other than that we don't find any common property between both of them 
So why doesn't this again identify? Since both of them has same execute automation as we mentioned and I am passing the same doc here but still why doesn't it identify? The important thing is we have navigated to a different page altogether. So this is a different page altogether so that you need to tell the Visual Studio that you have navigated to a different page, right? So that a small trick which you can do right here is you can again call these two guys the browser window and the document window and then if you try to run this it will work fine so let me just demonstrate this by writing a code here and if I run this guy once again so what I'm going to do is again I'm going to do a search functionality for the browser and the document and again I'm going to pass this guy here See, I'm not created the all new browser window or all new document here. I'm just going to use the existing object instance here, and then I'm going to use this guy. So now, if I run this test, so I'm just going to close this guy, and now if I run this test, it will open the browser for me. All right. Did you see that? It typed the initial here as KK which is what is expected right so you can see that we have called the same code right here the browser window and the HTML document right here after this click operation and it's performing the operation the reason is once you perform a click operation you can see the URL here once you perform the click login click operation it goes to a different URL altogether right and that's why Visual Studio expects you to re-identify the browser and its document and then it identifies these controls that's what it actually did in the uimap.design.cs itself or if you go to the uimap.ui test for clear visibility you can see that it has identified two different documents for them all together right so how to come out of this problem and how to sort these problems by writing just only one document so we'll discuss about these things in upcoming videos of this video series so that's it guys this is how you can do a hand coding of your custom class file instead of just using the uimm.design.cs file that's it guys. So thank you very much for watching this videos and have a great day.